Chang, Darian Chang. Now that was my poor imitation of James Bond, and uh, just so happened that uh, this product is 007. Welcome to the segment uh, B2B product marketing. Uh, in the segment, we'll talk about what a product is at a very basic level. And the key in B2B product marketing is what I call a total product system. And we'll learn how B2B products can be quite varied. And an important concept uh, in B2B uh, product marketing is uh, that of the value stack. Uh, and lastly, we'll understand how value stack can be aligned with the buying center approach. So. Let's get started. Okay, so why did I start with this uh, drill? Because uh, the uh, reason is uh, this is uh, a very famous example in uh, not only B2B marketing, but, but marketing. And uh, you may have seen me actually use this drill uh, before. And it gets at uh, what we're selling. And so if you are a drill manufacturer, you may think uh, we're selling drills, uh, but the real uh, answer is that we're selling, um, excuse me, holes. So that's what the, uh, the buyer is, uh, is buying. How can we make uh, a better uh, hole? And we can do it with the drill, we can do it with uh, uh, an awl the old fashioned way and it's quite cheap, maybe not as accurate. Uh, we can do it with uh, a computer numerically controlled machine. We could uh, even do it with uh, a laser. So we can do it with something very tangible, something based on technology, uh, but it may also involve a, a service dimension. So uh, even in uh, B2B uh, B marketing, uh, service can, can matter. Uh, we tend to think that it only matters in uh, B2C marketing. No, the truth is, is that uh, it can matter just as ma uh, much uh, in uh, B2B uh, marketing. Uh, and uh, so we have to really understand value uh, and the uh, end needs from the customer's uh, standpoint, uh, especially in terms of how much to, to mix the, the tangible uh, against the intangible. Uh, and that uh, uh, customization will depend on the nunnopi uh, or the eye leveling that is achieved uh, by uh, marketing. Okay, so I mentioned uh, TPS. So uh, this uh, is a diagram which uh, talks about TPS. And it's called TPS because uh, there are many uh, different components. Uh, we can start with uh, pre-marketing or even pre-engineering as it's often called these days. Then we have our main marketing and it doesn't end there. And lastly, we uh, ended with uh, what I call uh, post-marketing. And the reason I drew it this way was because uh, if we look at the arrows, we see that depending on the level, whether it's uh, pre-marketing, main marketing or post-marketing, uh, the, the targeting may be different, uh, and uh, we will recall that the, the numbers here refer to the buying uh, center member. Uh, so B2 could be uh, engineering. So uh, who does the, uh, the marketing? It doesn't have to be always the marketer. The captain of our uh, selling effort can be uh, our engineer. So the S2 could refer to our engineering department. So at the pre-marketing or pre-engineering level, and that's why it's often referred to as pre-engineering, it's not even marketing because uh, there has to be a lot of technical discussion that goes on between our potential buyer and us. But of course, uh, during the main marketing um, uh, stage, a lot of the transaction will take place between uh, the uh, purchasing department and our uh, sales and marketing personnel. Uh, and lastly, after a product is uh, bought and is being used, uh, there may be a lot of uh, after-sales effort 
that is needed. Uh, and that's uh, when uh, a department like S5, uh, let's say the technical support team, uh, uh, has to uh, serve the, uh, the user, uh, which here is uh, signified as B6. So there are many different stages, many, many different dynamics involved in uh, B2B product, uh, what I call TPS marketing. So these are the implications uh, of uh, TPS, that it's a, uh, a multi-stage and a, a team uh, uh, approach concept, uh, and that uh, the differentiation, the, the POD, uh, can be um, uh, achieved at any stage. It's not just at the uh, tangible product stage that uh, you achieve POD. Uh, if anything, uh, at the uh, pre-marketing stage or even at the uh, post-marketing stage, differentiation can be uh, somewhat uh, easier uh, in the sense that uh, not everything has been set in stone uh, at the uh, pre-marketing level uh, also, at the post-marketing level, a lot of it will involve uh, service. And so service can be customized uh, more easily than with uh, tangible uh, products. Uh, Pre-marketing is very important, uh, as we established in another uh, segment, uh, in locking in buyers uh, and making sure that the specification that the buyer wants is uh, favorable to us. Uh, and post-marketing can be uh, quite profitable uh, in the sense that uh, uh, service uh, can be uh, more uh, scalable uh, and cheaper than with uh, products. Okay, this is a, uh, a very useful way to think about uh, TPS. So I won't go into the nitty-gritty uh, details, but uh, let's just... Uh, uh, assume for the sake of uh, simplicity that uh, the first three stages involve uh, pre-marketing and the, the next three stages involve main marketing and post-marketing uh, involves the, the very last uh, uh, stage, which is uh, uh, satisfaction of the, the cus uh, customer. And what this chart gets at is that, well, we have to plan. So the key word is plan. And we have to delegate uh, roles and responsibility. Here is even more uh, than just roles and responsibility. It's uh, accountability. It's uh, who has to be consulted, who has to be at least kept in the loop. And so the uh, RACI uh, will differ uh, by the uh, TPS stage. So not everyone has to be involved. Uh, at every stage. So we have to make sure that, uh, again, the key people who are responsible and accountable uh, do have to be.